Our newsletter is coming along, but we want to start organizing the content that we've been bringing in. We've been bringing in a lot of different content and stacking them inside of our, our design. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is the layers panel. The layers panel is where all the content resides. And depending on which spread you're on, it will show you only the content for that spread. So the layers panel is between the links panel and the pages panel up here at the top on the right hand side. When I click on it, I only see one layer. Now you might think, okay, it's one layer here, but it's also on page one, for example, one layer here. It's the same layer one for all of this content. Well, again, it's contextual. The content that I have on this page, if I expand layer one, I will see, for example, my Finley Park, my uh, text boxes and the actual sunset image. But if I scroll to the second spread here, it changes to the haunted savannah, the event calendar and everything that's on this spread. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to work in the layers panel, you need to be on the spread for the content you're looking for. Otherwise, you might miss it. So I'm going to start, for example, on the um, cover page. And when I look at the layers panel, I can see layer one is expanded and the Finley, Columbia, South Carolina and the Sanctuary Ocean. Those are the two last images that I brought in, the, in one of the lessons previous. Therefore, they've stacked them on top of everything else. The stacking order for your content is determined by the order in which you added it to the page. So in this case, the last item I added was the Finley Park from Columbia, South Carolina, so that's at the top. The last item is always closest to the user. The first item is always furthest away from the user. So if I were to take these images, for example, and I were to move them so they were overlapping each other, you're going to see that they're one in front of the other. So this was the image previous, previous to that, and then this is the most recent image. So they're going back in the order of time. Now, if I were to rearrange the list of items, so if I grab this Finley Park here and I move it down the Bonaventure, you're gonna see it's now behind. It's not only behind the Sanctuary Hotel, but it's also behind the Bonaventure image. So let me zoom in a little bit so we can see this better. I always forget to do that. So now I've changed the stacking order by moving it up or down inside the layers panel. The purpose of that is because if you've laid something out and it's covering something you needed, you can always move it forward or backward by changing the stacking order in the layers panel. I could also right click on it and I could choose, for example, arrange. Right click arrange will let me bring to front or bring to back. Now bring to front means put it all the way on the top of the layers stack and send to back means put it all the way in the bottom of the layer stack. Now sending to back could be problematic, especially here with the grand, this grand image that I've got on the cover. It means that I won't be able to see it because if it goes below the sunrise image, it's gonna be hidden. So you do have incremental steps, bring forward and send backward. The shortcut key for that is command hard bracket, command open hard bracket will send it forward and command close bracket will send it backward. Or maybe I have that in reverse, but you can see here the forward option is command or control hard bracket. However, using the layers panel for me is more intuitive. So if I want that to be stacked back at the top, I click and drag this up at the top, and now it's stacked on top. These images don't really stack anyway, they're side by side by side, so you're never going to see that. However, it is important that they're on top of the sunrise image or otherwise they're going to be uh, blocked out. The sunrise image is all the way at the bottom, that's behind everything. So any new content I add to this cover, that image will be behind it, and that's on purpose. Now inside the layers panel, you can see to the left is a visibility icon. The visibility icon is the little eyeball. If I click on it, I will actually hide that icon or that image. You can determine what images or what elements you're working with within your design by turning it on or off. So if I wasn't sure, if it wasn't labeled, um, if, if I just didn't know which element that was in my design, I could click the visibility icon and say, oh, it didn't turn off, then it wasn't the one I thought it was. So then I go and I, I look for the list and, and do the visibility. So that's how I use it really. I will turn on or off to determine that it, am I working the right with the right object that I want to be working on and focused on. 
Now, you can quickly turn off all or some of these visibility icons. If I click the visibility on layer one, then everything on this layer is going to get hidden. So the entire cover page at this point has disappeared. But I can do the individuals by left clicking and dragging down. As I left click and drag down, notice the content is starting to disappear one at a time. So you can click to, to bring the visibility icons back and drag on the visibility icon. So you can quickly hide and show content. And right now I'm just scrolling back up to bring that together again. So all the content is back. Same thing with the icon to the right of the visibility. There's a blank square here that represents lock mechanism. Locking your layers means that you can't edit them. And that's very useful. So let's say I know that my sunrise image and my travel and my awesome those are all ready to go. They don't need any kind of edits anymore, and I don't want to accidentally select them and move them out of place. Well, I can lock them in position. So if I start here at the bottom, and I click on my sunrise, that locks the sunrise. And then I've got my sanctuary and my travel. So here's the travel and the awesome. I could lock those elements. Any elements that I lock in my design will get a little lock icon in the upper left corner. So there's the word travel, my, and awesome, and the image of the sunrise are now all locked. And that's appropriate. You can click on those icons to unlock the individual element in the event that it was locked. So you don't have to go looking for it in the layers panel. But the blank square between the visibility icon and the little blue bar is to lock that particular layer from editing purposes. The fact that my layer here is blue is because that's the default color for all layers inside of InDesign. If I don't like the color blue, I can double click on that blue line and change it to something else. So here I can make it a different color. I can also change the layer name. Um, layer one is fine since even when I go on my second spread, it'll be called that same name. So I can't call it cover, for example, because uh, that's just not going to be, it's not going to, it's going to be cover even on the second spread. Uh, so I usually leave the layer names uh, the way they are. But if the color of the selected frames match the color of my background images and I can't see them as good as well, I can change that color to something else that stands out even more. So here I've changed it to this green color and when I click OK, all of those elements now turn green. So the frame around them has turned green for all the elements on that layer. If I keep moving forward to the right, you see the name of the layer and the name of the elements that I'm working with. But then to the right of that, you'll see this square. The square represents a selected item. So if I click on the square to the right of the Finley, Columbia, South Carolina, I will select that item. You'll see the handles go around that item. Now, the reason why that is, is because it's a lot easier than coming into the design and clicking on it and not knowing which one you click, clicked on. I can now see a green square to the right of the Savannah, Georgia text. I didn't know where it was in the list, but now I can clearly see that's the selected item. So the green square to the right always determines that's the selected item. Now here's the thing, if I click on the layer, it doesn't select the item. Notice I clicked on this layer Finley, and I can move the layer up and down and change the stacking order, but it didn't actually select the object. If I click the green square to the right of that, now that object is selected. If I need more than one object to be selected, I can hold the shift key and click the square to the right of those objects and work with all of them as one unit. So you can see now they're all selected. They're selected in the Layers panel and they're selected in my design. So the Layers panel is really, really powerful. Uh, lets you organize your content and work with it. Now it's not like the other applications. It's not like Photoshop, for example, where I can create a folder and start organizing them in the folder. They're already inside of a folder and I'm just working with the individual items. As a matter of fact, the plus down here will create a new layer. This new layer will get stacked above layer one. I could move elements to that new layer and the, anything in, in layer two will be above all the items on layer one. So I could put that sunrise image on layer one and all of the other elements on layer two. To move an element to a new layer, I click on the selection icon to the right of it and I drag that selection icon to the new layer. Once I do this, that will now reside in there and you can see the blue border has gone around my Finley part. It is now inside that layer. So you grab the green bar and you drag it up. You can only do one at a time. Okay? It's not meant to be organized like you might do in Photoshop, for example, but it certainly works and allows me to stack this on top of everything else. So the layers panel, very powerful for organizing your content and making sure that your content 
is not covering other elements within your design that you need to see. We hope this video helped. Make sure to click the thumbs up and click the subscribe button right here. And click the link above to check out our Limelight classes, a free virtual live training. See you in the next video.